Hello everyone, and thank you again to whoever trusted and nominated me for this position. Uh, this has been a year of unprecedented success in SIDA, and as president, I want to build off this success and continue it. Uh, I feel I bring a lot to the table as president. I have a lot of experience. I spent this last year serving as your VP for away conferences, and I've been able to see firsthand the skill and the work ethic required to lead this club. I also bring a lot of experience outside the club. I've served on executive boards from other clubs on campus, as well as on the student council for the College of Agriculture. These leadership opportunities have kind of molded me into who I am today, someone with veteran experience who's prepared for the challenges I face as president. Uh, I also bring a very specific and detailed plan to improve the club next year. I think it's very important that we set specific goals and how we're going to meet those goals. And with that in mind, I kind of want to go over what those goals are and how I plan to make them a reality next year. Uh, the first of my goals is making the e-board more accessible. I think it's really unacceptable how many people in the club are intimidated by the e-board because these are the people we chose to lead us. The way I want to fix this is first, I really want to encourage and really more advertise the fact that people are allowed to attend e-board meetings. This is something we're already allowed to do, but not a lot enough people kind of realize they can. I think if more people start to attend e-board meetings, they'll kind of dispel some of the negative rumors about the e-board, and they'll be able to get a more first-hand look at how exactly this club is run. In addition, I'd also want to dedicate time at the end of e-board meetings to kind of to be able to hear concerns from members, and so that way we can kind of get feedback from members live. Uh, and this ties into my second goal, which is inclusivity. I think inclusivity is something we harp on a lot in this club, and as a result, it gets a bad rap as kind of a meaningless buzzword, but it is very important. And while I want to kind of continue the overall body of work on inclusivity past e-boards have done, I also want one very specific area that I want to improve on next year, and that is that I think as a club, we have a tendency to be so loud that we push some of the quieter members of the club to the side. Um, this means a lot to me because I know so many people in the club who are quieter and they do feel ignored. And I've known people who've left the club because they felt ignored. This isn't okay. These people have a lot they could contribute to the club if we just stopped to listen to them. As president, I want to make sure that these people are able to find their voice and find their place inside them. And finally, I want to be able to kind of reinvest some of our budget surplus from this past year into membership activities. Uh, this year is a great success for Scientists financially. Um, and while fiscal responsibility isn't something that's important and it's something that I do want to continue, I also think it's important to remember that we are a student org and that none of us are going to take any of this money with us when we leave. But what we can take is we can take the memories and all the lessons from these membership activities. The most important of which I think is bringing back the fall retreat, which right now we really don't have a concrete plan for. We can't exactly show up at Katie Martuska's house again. <laughs> I'd like to invest $1,000 to $1,200 to kind of bring you back the fall retreat, but also making sure it's just as rewarding as it was last year, because everyone who went thought it was a rewarding experience. We had a roughly 80% retention rate in new members who did attend the retreat. So I want to bring it back, and I want to make sure it's just as rewarding and meaningful for everyone who attends next year as it was this past year. In addition, I also want to bump up the VP membership's uh, general budget to $1,000, um, and make sure they really work with them to make sure they use this money. Uh, whether it's just kind of more involved membership events, uh, paying for people to attend membership events, or even just paying for snacks at meetings. I think these are small things, but they really add up and improve the quality of life of the club. Uh, some people may see, say these are wastes of money, but I think the real waste of money is just having this money sit in our ASA account where it's not doing any of us any good. And I think membership in particular is so important because I think a lot of these lessons that we learn in membership activities are just as important as the ones we learn in the committee room. I think Molly Wen teaches us to kind of speak up and make sure that our voice is heard, but membership kind of teaches us that sometimes we have to listen and make sure others' voices are heard too. Molly Wen kind of teaches us to push ourselves and compete and be the best version of ourselves we can be, but membership reminds us that at the end of the day, there's more to all this than just gavels. And that's kind of the note I want to end on, because this time last year, uh, I decided to run for VP Away because I thought what we did in this club mattered. And this year, I find myself in the same position. I chose to run for president because I think the lessons we learn in this club matter. I think the friends we make in this club matter. I think that all the good times and all the bad times in this club matter, and that we're going to carry these with us for the rest of our lives. I chose to run as president because I want to make sure that everyone in this club has just as meaningful and just as significant of a SIDA experience as I got to have. So once again, thank you, SIDA, for all you've given to me and for all you continue to give to me. It would be an honor to serve as your president. Thank you. Role of president is often seen as the biggest role model for members, and the position itself can intimidate people. 
So how do you personally slash individually plan to reach out to these new members and make your position more accessible? I think the most important thing you can do is just talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that was something that this past year's VP away, I thought the previous vice president did do a good job of that, and it was something I really wanted to improve on. And I think just talking to people one-on-one -on -one in kind of a friendly manner, uh, coming up to them at meetings, checking in on them, just asking them how they're doing and how they're feeling, this goes a long way to, I think, making them feel like they are part of not just a club, but more of a family. Yes, Anna. Um, so we've, you talked about inclusivity as a, a buzzword. Uh, professionalism is also one of our buzzwords. Um, in this club, how do you feel, what is your goal for professionalism as a club? Uh, what do we need to improve on or can we kind of relax about in your opinion for next year? Um, obviously you can never really relax about professionalism, but I also think professionalism is something that you just kind of have to keep working at. The, the most important thing you can do with professionalism is obviously there's been concerns with that anonymous feedback forms, but when you do know, when we know as a club someone's acting unprofessional, I think we as a club all have to hold those people accountable no matter what position you're in. And that's kind of the tone I'd want to set. Everyone can hold anyone accountable for, for professionalism. Yes, Trevor. I am, I am assuming in from that. Hashtag finance is perspective um, again, and this time the thing I want to target is uh, your plans for the membership budget. Um, so our VP membership last year did not um, spend the money that I had allocated out. Um, so I was wondering how you would uh, um, encourage uh, the new VP membership to like fully spend the money you want them to spend. And then also my second question is, what is the legacy you'd like to do this for? Okay, so to answer your first question, yes, I think it's really important that I work with the VP membership. Uh, obviously, I had a few ideas, and I want to hear their ideas as well. I think the big thing is just let, letting the VP membership know that they can feel comfortable spending this money because we are in such a great place financially. Uh, kind of the budget I laid out uh, is based on an absolute worst case scenario. If, if we spend the maximum amount of money, if Punk and Punk were somehow disasters, which I don't expect them to be, and even with all that, we sell thousands of dollars left over as a surplus. So I want to make sure, definitely make sure they feel comfortable knowing that this $1,000 is absolutely $1,000 that they can work with to do whatever they want as VP membership. Um, and for your second question, I think the legacy I want to leave, I think the most important of my three goals is the e-board accessibility. Um, I want to make sure that my legacy is that there's no rift between the e-board and the other members of the club, that everyone feels comfortable approaching all members of the e-board, and we all really do feel like a family. Minute 20 left. Uh, Dennis? Um, <clears throat> you mentioned both the inclusivity as well as just uh, spending uh, more money on the membership budget as well as maybe helping uh, pay for some like students to go on save retreats and stuff like that because like, from past experience with both high school these type of organizations can be quite costly quite often. Uh, do you think that money could possibly be used to, not for myself, but sorry, but like for uh, possible new members that feel like they would love to participate and be more included in this club, but you know, going away on these away conferences or even paying for retreats can sometimes be burdensome and stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. Those people, sorry. Absolutely. I want to make, um, I never want finances to be a barrier for anyone to, like if they, I don't want everyone to feel like they have to pay too much and they can't attend side events. Uh, particularly in ideas like retreats weren't really what I was thinking. I was knowing uh, this past year we planned things like ice skating trips and things like that. I think reinvesting in that, we have the money to spend and I think that'll improve membership attendance at those events. However, I do also want to be able to use money, especially if people are willing to work for it and really prep for away conferences, I would definitely be willing to use some of that money if, that people can earn to pay for their ability to go on away conferences. 46 seconds. Yes. Okay. What's one thing you thought Katie did well this year and how would you build on it? Uh, I think one thing Katie always does well any year is that she's an amazing listener and she is able to listen to any problem and give you really meaningful feedback and I think that's one of the most important skills you can have as a leader. And Michael, if you could be any part of a bicycle, uh, what part would it be and why? Uh, so I'm going to give the same answer I always give. Uh, I want to be pedals because I want to be a force that moves people forward. Thank you.